hey, hey, remember New Year's Day? Of course. It was just a scant many weeks ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you may also remember that you made a uh, decision, probably after several beers, that you would resolve to improve yourself this year. You said you'd exercise more, take off a couple of pounds, you'd be more attentive to your finances or your kids or your third ex-wife, whatever it was. But later on, maybe, and, and maybe a week or two later, I don't know, your clean spiritedness is all, is all gone. It, all the luster is off, and you decided that the way you were wasn't all that bad. And besides, it was a lot easier to live that way anyway. So your resolutions, much like the hopes of every Chicago Cubs fan about a month into the baseball season, just fly out the window, never to be heard from again. And then the next year, same thing happens. Lather, rinse, repeat. So why do so many people start the year with such uh, high hopes, really, about fulfilling their New Year's resolutions and then not follow through? The question would be, are the goals people set just too high? Well, lifestyle coach and martial arts champion, Carl Romain, that's a cool name with a cool CV, uh, is here with us on the Boomer's Lifeline to talk about how to stick to it and make it happen. And, and by the way, why it uh, often doesn't uh, uh, happen. Hey, Carl, thanks for joining us for a couple minutes on the program today. Thank you for having me on the show. You bet. Okay, so many people uh, set goals, not just on January 1st, of course, but all year long, and they find that their expectations, I guess they find their expectations were just a little too high. I, I, I got to ask you, is the idea of even making a New Year resolution a bad idea? Oh, no. Making a new, new Year's resolution is a very important idea. You know, 45% of people set those, and only about 8% of the people actually ever achieve the goals that they set. Wow. But it is important to actually set the goals and start working towards them. So, Carl, uh, there are people who say that trying to improve yourself is actually a lot tougher than simply learning to accept yourself as you are, faults and all. Uh, is it a matter of self-confidence, or is it something a little more complicated than that? Uh, honestly, I think it is important to accept yourself, but it is important to constantly improve. You know, if we don't improve ourselves, we'll never get to the places that we want to go or achieve the things we want to do in life. We're actually taught that from a very young age, that it's important for us to grow and to improve, and that's why we go to school. That's why we get an education. That's why we want to do better. So I think it's important that, yes, you do accept who you are. You understand who you are, more importantly, and what your faults are, but that you do strive to achieve and, and go further and, and, and try to do better with your life. So obviously, uh, Carl, it takes a certain amount of self-confidence, I think, mm -hmm. because you're always mm -hmm. going to have setbacks. You're always going to have, if, if, if you say you want to lose 15 pounds and then one night, you know, you, 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 I don't know, you have some cake or whatever. I mean, uh, there are a lot of people that lose confidence with themselves that I've blown it once, I mm -hmm. can't do it. How do, you, how do you instill that in somebody who seems to have, you know, like no self-confidence? Well, I, I think the thing is to remember is, more than self-confidence, self-discipline, which is doing what I know I should do without anybody reminding me whether I like it or not, you know, or forced behavior until it becomes automatic, is probably the most important factor in accomplishing your goals. And when you think about it, most of the times when we start something new, we don't have that confidence. You know, when you first learn something, you're taking lessons maybe, or even like a child learning how to walk, you don't really have the confidence. You feel like you're uncomfortable. You feel like you're going to fall over. Right? right? But it takes time and it takes experience. And when we have discipline and we're willing to push ourselves to do something over and over again, eventually we gain the confidence that we need to have. I know as an athlete and having worked with professional athletes, uh, when they're taking on new skills or taking on a new position or just even making the transition, working from being a, a college-level athlete to a professional athlete, there's a certain level there where they have to get experience. And that experience is where the confidence comes from. But the process, in order to stay with the process, you need self-discipline. You, 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 mentioned, you mentioned athletes as well. They, they talk about being in the zone. And one of the things that they find out when they're in that zone, whatever, and you know what I'm talking about, uh, they, mm -hmm. they, they say, I, I have nothing but self-confidence. It's like I, 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 can't, I can't lose. And that sort mm -hmm. of gets you into that zone. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, that's a big part of what I'm talking about, and I really believe that comes from the discipline and repetition of doing something over and over again until you become really good at it. I think many people give up too early. So, Carl, would you suggest maybe making smaller goals, you know, like some resolution where the goal is going to be able to be met in a month or two? Like, you know, don't make it quite so huge where it actually could be something that you can see the results of in just a little right. bit of time? 
Exactly. So when you set a goal, you got to look at, for instance, let's say your goal is to lose weight. You know, it took time to put it on. It's going to take time to take it off. So maybe you set the goal for 12 months out, but then in between you have shorter goals. Okay, so month one, where should I be? Month two, where should I be? You know, you might want to think about, so let's say at the end of 12 months, I want to lose 60 pounds. So that's five pounds a month. So it's very easy for me to know where I should be at the end of the first month. And that's an easy way to measure your progress, and that'll keep you on track and actually keep you motivated longer. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would say that if you've broken or lost whatever resolution you had January 1st, I mean, heck, we're, we've got the rest of the year to go. It's not too late. Now, right. Carl Romain, it's you've... It's never too late to start over again. You, that's a good point. Now, you've written a book on self-confidence. Just, just tell us mm -hmm. a, a little bit about that, if you would. Well, the book is called The Self-Confidence Factor, and it's regards to bullying, because I really believe that one of the key factors that we have to look at is that we need to make sure that our kids aren't being victims anymore. And the best way to prepare them for bullying is to teach them how to be more confident in themselves. So, of course, that ties into goal setting. It ties into meeting new people. It ties into everything that we do in life. You know, if you have greater self-confidence, you, you can definitely achieve goals. You definitely be much more successful. But how do we actually do that? Well, I think it starts from the time when our children are little and what we actually uh, do with them. You know, if your child wants to be good at sports, you go out in the yard and you practice with them. In the book, I actually give parents practical tools and steps that they can do and work with their child on helping their children be more confident. Do you, do, do you see just, uh, do you see among kids these days, has it changed over the years? Are, are kids, for whatever reason, less confident in themselves than they used to be a generation or two ago? Uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. As a martial arts instructor, and I've been teaching over the last uh, 20 years, I definitely see a difference in the right. confidence level of our children. I'm not sure why that is exactly, but I do notice that, that yeah. what happens is if the child was being bullied, like when I was growing up, we were taught by our parents, you know, a certain level or a certain way to handle that. Right. And a lot of times now the kids almost like take on this idea that whatever this person is saying or doing to them is their fault, their fault yeah. not good enough. It's, it's, and so it's really important for us to teach them that that's not really the case. Carl Romain, I uh, uh, appreciate you being with us. It's spelled R-O-M-A-I-N, as I understand it, your last name. So if they want to get, you, get yeah. it on Amazon, they can do that. Hey, Carl, thanks very much. We appreciate you taking the time with us today. Thank you. All right, take care. Uh, good stuff once again. We are out of time, so hang on for more. We've got a very self-confident Professor Plum standing by to confidently answer your questions and uh, take your calls. If you have any questions, you can call right now, 877-PLANNER. The Boomer's Brain Trust, we're coming right back. We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust. The views and opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors and should not be considered as legal tax or investment advice. You should always consult with the appropriate advisors before making any financial decision.